Welcome back everybody. I'm Ashton and this is Desktop Inventions. So I'd like to take a moment and thank everybody. We've passed a huge milestone, over a thousand subscribers now. So I'd like to thank you everybody for supporting me along the way. Now in celebration of a thousand subscribers, or a thousand fans you might say, we're going to do a fan shootout video today. So it's a follow up to the last video where we had the Noctua 4020 fan, had the Creality 4010 fan, and there's a lot of requests to add the Noctua 4010 fan. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna to add this fan to the shootout and we're gonna add more testing. So at the end of the day, we're gonna see how these fans compare against each other. So let's get to it. And for the first test today, we'll be doing a heating test. So we're gonna look at this front fan, which is used to keep the heat sink behind there cool and make sure that your filament is not overheating inside of the heat sink. And to measure that, we'll be using this four channel digital thermometer that I made on a previous video. And I've got one of the channels with the thermal couple stuck in a Bowden tube. And we're gonna take this piece of Bowden tube and stick it down in the middle of there and let the printer heat up to a steady state and monitor the temperature of the four different fans as we do that. So let's get to it. So here I'm disassembling the direct drive extruder motor off of the top so we can get the Bowden tube out. And then we'll be placing the sensor inside of the heatsink. First we measured the big Noctua 4020 fan which ended up reaching a steady state peak of 40 degrees. Then we did the same test but swapped the fan for the Creality 4010 fan and we ran this test at 24 volts. And this one ended up reaching a peak steady state of just over 42 degrees. Now we can see the results of those two fans over time. Again, the Noctua 4020 being just a few degrees better. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the Noctua 4010 fan. So now let's get it opened up. So we're gonna have this one to test and see how it compares against its big brother. 40 by 40 and then a 10 millimeter depth. Let's get to it. Since this Noctua is a 12 volt fan, we'll be using this DC converter. So we'll convert the 24 volts from the printer to 12 volts. Now we'll get the fan swapped over so we can do testing. Now we will select preheat PLA and let the testing begin. And now back to the chart, we can see the Noctua 4010 fan was actually better than the Creality 4010 fan but worse than the Noctua 4020, so it landed right in the middle. I found it strange that the Noctua 4010 was actually better than the Creality, since they're the same size and the Creality was moving much faster and moving more air. So I thought maybe this is because the Creality 4010 was having too much airflow and turbulent airflow, so I decided to do a test turning that down to 12 volts to reduce the airflow. So let's see if that made the results any better. Oh, what? It doesn't even fit on this graph. Okay, so let's adjust the scale and see how that looks. Wow, that fan is performing much worse. At 12 volts, the temperature has risen all the way to 50 degrees, so I don't recommend that. All right, and the next test we're planning to do is an airflow test. So I have this Noctua fan attached to a empty garbage bag here. I guess it's about two or three gallons, but basically we're going to turn on the fan and see how long it takes to blow this up. And my first attempt at this was really a mess and definitely not going to be consistent at testing different fans. So to make this a little better, I've 3D printed these little brackets that we can clamp the garbage bag onto and then swap the fans out, which should at least make this test more repeatable. It probably will still be messy, but at least it'll be repeatable. So let's do that. Okay, here's our test setup. We have the garbage bag suspended to reduce the resistance and the fan is screwed in place on there and we found a good use for calibration cubes. And up here we have a power bank and a voltage converter so we can drive these fans at whichever voltage we want.
All right, for comparison, let's see how a human does at this test. Whew, not bad. Now looking at all the results of the testing, the Creality 4010 at 12 volts was the slowest, then the Noctua 4010 fan, and then the Noctua 4020 fan, and then the fastest fan, just by a hair, was the Creality 4010 fan at 24 volts. And all of those are just a little bit slower than the average human. Although anything longer than a 10 second test and the average human probably wouldn't fare so well. And next up, we're gonna start doing tests on the part cooling fans. So these fans on the side are actually cooling onto the nozzle to cool the filament as it prints into the part. And we'll be testing two of the Noctua 4020 fans, two of the Noctua 4010 fans, as well as as well as one of the Creality 4010 fans. We'll put on one side and see the results we get from when you have cooling from just one side. And to test the part cooling fans, we'll be printing this little bridge test print piece. So we'll be printing it in this orientation as well as this orientation to see how the printer does at printing these unsupported bridges. And the fans will be blowing from this direction for this print and this direction when we have it oriented like this. And here's some up close video of bridging in action. It looks very cool because it looks like the printer is printing in midair. And without the proper part cooling fan, you won't be able to print this in midair because the bridge will start to sag. First up, we have the Noctua 4020 fan. These parts turned out really well. There was no sag on any of these bridges. And next up, we have the Noctua 4010 fan. These parts also turned out extremely well. There was no sagging on either of these parts. Then we had the Creality 4010 fan printing at 24 volts, so this was only blowing from one side. Uh, these parts turned out pretty well too. I think there was one piece where there's a little bit of sagging. Other than that, it looked pretty good. And then we did the Creality 4010 fan at 12 volts, and this one was a different story. So this bridge turned out okay. We had maybe one bridge where there's some sagging, but this part, when it was printed in this orientation with the fan blowing this way, this one didn't do so well. We had a lot of sagging on the three longer bridges. So I would say this one failed this test. And for comparison, here's a part printed with no cooling fans. So all of the bridges failed and you can see there's quite a bit of sag there. And here is the Creality fan, just on one side. It is the ugliest and the loudest. But let's see if it can bridge. And it seems like it can bridge. All right, on to the next test. I thought this bridging test was a little bit too easy, so I've designed a harder test. And this one I call the bowl stress test. So we're going to be 3D printing a bowl that has different overhang angles from 40, 50, 60, and 70 degrees as it goes up. And here's what that test looks like. So this will be an interesting test because we're going to see, especially with the cooling fan on one side, how that acts all along all 360 degrees. All right, so let's look at the results of the prints here. So first up, we have the Noctua 4020. This will be two cooling fans have the black line in the front here to show the front of the part. So it's sitting like this and we have the two cooling fans on it. So this one looked really good. It was actually the best of all of them. And it had just a few blemishes here with these drops on the edges. And overall levels one, two, and three, the 40, 50, 60 degree looked flawless. And there's just a few little uh, issues with the fourth layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this part a nine out of 10. And a quick note here, this is the seam from when the printer was printing and changing directions. I could have eliminated this using base mode, but it was a few prints in before I thought of this and I wanted to make sure all parts were printed the same. Next up is the Noctua 4010 fans. Again, this is two cooling fans from the two sides. In this one, we're starting to see more blemishes showing up. We've got these drops forming here and here as well as we've got some deformation of the bottom edges here and here. So on this, on this bowl, I would say level one and two were pretty much flawless, but level three and four were not, and they started to have some blemishes. 
So overall, I'd give this a 7 out of 10. Next up here, we have the Creality 4010 fan at 24 volts, and this was just a single cooling fan. Again, this line is the front, so the one cooling fan would be from this direction. And actually, we see the leading edge of the fan has less of these drops, but just off to the sides here is where we start to see these drops forming. And also, the back edge looked pretty good too, probably the best looking edge on this print. So this one has blemishes on both layers three and four. Um, and actually this one was a little bit better than the Noctua 4010 fans. If we look for a comparison here, I think overall I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. And next up here, we have the Creality 4010 at 12 volts. And this is where things start to get uh, interesting. So again, one cooling fan from this direction, and we're starting to see a lot more of these drops and blemishes form. Layers one and two are still looking good, but three and four were getting pretty rough here. So with how rough this one's looking, I would give the Creality 4010 at 12 volts a five out of 10. And to sum everything up, I've laid out all the tests and all the fans in a table here and tried to score them each out of 10. The scoring doesn't necessarily tell the whole story, but it does show that the Creality 4010 at 12 volts is just not a good solution. And the Noctua 4020 fan was the best solution. I would say in general, I don't see any issues with replacing your Creality with a Noctua fan for the heatsink cooling fan. And if you want to replace your part cooling fans with Noctua fans, you can also do that. But there are some trade-offs and not all cooler designs are the same, so results may vary. Anyways, I hope this helps inform people about the differences between these fans and helps you make the best decision for your 3D printer in the future. If you like this video, please leave a like or comment down below, and we'll see you in the next video on Desktop Inventions.